The Threat in the Great Lakes The sea lamprey, also known as the vampire fish of the Great Lakes, these species are native to the Atlantic Ocean. They've taken a journey targeting the fish of the Great Lakes. Lake trout's population is decreasing at a rate never seen before. These parasitic fish are invasive to the Great Lakes. Sea lamprey are S-shaped swimmers, meaning they have no bones and move in a side-to-side -side motion. They are mostly made of cartilage. They move like snakes, but underwater. They are one of the most primitive of all vertebrate species. Their speed makes catching fish much easier. Sea lamprey eat many different types of large fish. For example, lake trout. Sea lamprey throughout their lifetime can eat up to 40 pounds of fish, which is why they are very invasive to the Great Lakes food web. Sea lampreys have an enormous negative impact on the Great Lakes fishery, inflicting considerable damage. Before the sea lamprey invasion, Canada and the United States harvested about 15 million pounds of lake trout in the upper Great Lakes each year. By the late 1940s, sea lamprey populations had exploded. They fed on large numbers of lake trout, lake whitefish, and etc. Basically fish that were the mainstays of a thriving Great Lakes fishery. By the early 1960s, the catch had dropped dramatically to approximately 300,000 pounds, about 2% of the previous average. During the time of the highest sea lamprey abundance, up to 85% of fish that were not killed by sea lampreys were marked with sea lamprey attack wounds. The once thriving fisheries were devastated, and along with them, the hundreds of thousands of jobs related to this region's economy were lost. Sea lamprey have a suction cup mouth, which helps them to stick onto their prey without falling off. They feed off of their host's blood. They have about three rows of teeth, as you can see in this diagram. They also have two teeth on their tongue, which helps them grasp on to their prey and dig a hole so that they can get blood of their host. All of the razor sharp teeth, as you can see, help make the hole big enough. As you see on this diagram, sea lamprey have seven gills. These gills are different from normal fish. Instead of letting out water, they take in water. Then they take the oxygen and leave out the extra water. It's basically a net. Since the sea lamprey's mouth is onto the fish, it can't take in water, which is why its gills are built this way. As you can see in this chart, they all start as larvae. They then burrow themselves under the sand, waiting for a few months. Later on, they turn into their metamorphosis stage. This is where they start to eat. And next on, they turn into the parasitic juvenile. This is where they start attaching to the fish and feeding off of them. This is how they get their 40 pounds. Later on, when females are spawning, they go to streams where they can smell healthy larvae and mates. So then they mate with the male. Later on, they start to build a nest to lay their larvae in. They use these rocks to build a nest. As you can see, their suction cup mouth is not only used for sucking the blood off of their prey. Then, later on, the larvae start to redo the cycle, and it goes over and over again until these fish keep on going like that. The Sea Lamprey Control Program, administered by the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, relies on exploiting sea lamprey vulnerability when they are congregated in Great Lakes tributaries at either the larval stage or adult stage of their life cycle. Lamprocytes are what they use to kill the lamprey. While a combination of barriers and traps are used to prevent the upstream migration and reproduction of adult sea lampreys. Thank you. Please subscribe and like.